Um, so I've got a little bit of a lengthy segment. So if you'd like to get some more wine, some more food, I'm not going to be offended in any way. Please move around as you see fit. Um, so I started here at the center in 2010. I learned about social entrepreneurship from Professor Jim Cook, who taught it in the business school, founded this center. And uh, my first engagement was doing some research, and I was able to go to an in-residence and you know, pick up some pieces of what we were doing at the GSBI. But it wasn't until maybe a year later that I started to really understand what was going on. And I always just thought that that was a rite of passage. <laughs> Every single year, the entrepreneurs say, oh, this is amazing. I just I didn't know what I was going to get. And, and um, oftentimes, the mentors uh, as well, it'll take kind of a full cycle to really um, start understanding how all of our programs are fitting together and where we're coming from. And so this is an attempt to try to remedy that. So for the new mentors here, I guess you might have a leg up. Um, and for everyone else, hopefully this further clarifies things that you already know. Um, I'll mostly be talking about the accelerator, but I think the framework uh, is, is applicable to all of our programs. Um, and so we really feel like for social entrepreneurs that are hoping to scale their business, um, there's two main components that, they're, uh, that we need to help them build in order to be successful. Um, one is you know, helping them get funded. And so money plus the operational capacity will equal impact is our theory. Um, and so the two components there, really understanding how much funding that they need and all of the components in, an, uh, in a justifiable ask, as we call it, which I'll go into some more detail on. Um, the presentation skills and the packaging that, that's required to present that information in a compelling way, um, the operational management acumen that's needed to translate dollars into activities and impact, um, and also identifying and addressing any other gaps in the organization um, that are going to need work. And so in order to get social organizations to a path of sustainable growth and scalability, we really see these four main vectors um, of, of importance. So the impact model, the business model, their scalable operations, and then cash flow and funding. And so along the first component, so the impact model and the metrics, we see uh, several criteria. And so each of these are sort of building on each other. And so one is really articulating a very clear mission statement and understanding who you're trying to reach with your product or service. Um, articulating the problem statement that is reinforced by customer feedback, um, having validated products and services that are compelling to the beneficiaries that you're trying to reach, and so uh, demonstrated value there. Hopefully everyone can see this stuff. Um, formalized metrics and collection that prove you're having impact so that you can make a case for support, and um, finally documented impact metrics that show that this intervention or alternative is superior to the alterna uh, other alternatives. And so another vector there would be the business model and metrics. And what we mean by that is first really articulating who you're going after and who you're selling to, um, what the unit economics are with the margins uh, articulated, um, having a clear value chain including customer ROI, customer acquisition methods and market development plans, and partner relations codified. And so these first two vectors are really what's um, emphasized more so for GSBI online. And then we build upon these and get into the other two for the accelerator. And um, the main component that we want to stress is the overlap between the impact model and the business model. And the bigger the overlap there, um, the stronger the organization is. and um, more successful they'll be on their path to scale. And so getting into a couple other components and what we further go into more detail on for the accelerator is um, for the operations side is really having a strong management team, um, having operational budget plans uh, with the ability to compare to actual results like KPIs for example which we reinforce quite a bit. Um, Eventually having process manuals for quality control and repeatability uh, to help support that scale. And then finally strategic initiatives for multi-year sustainable growth. And that's something that we, we really get into uh, for the accelerator especially. Uh, and then integrated KPIs and strategic initiatives that are tied to the financial metrics. So this kind of comes up in the justifiable ask component so that you can really articulate where you're trying to go, how much it's going to cost you, the resources it takes you to get there, and then what kind of impact 
that is going to translate to as well. And so what we mean by investment readiness here, um, starting with audited financial results, um, then having multi-year financial projections with baseline business and strategic initiatives, um, having a break-even analysis with profit and cash flow, the justifiable ask, and a completed due diligence folder. And for the justifiable ask, what we really mean is understanding how much capital you need, the type of capital you're looking for that is best for the type of growth that you're trying to fund, um, having the investor return or the impact that you're going to have with uh, that funding, and, um, and as well as exactly how much money you need. And so we believe that with these components, um, we can really help organizations get to that sustainable growth and scalability. And so I uh, want to show you an example. Um, Eric Sorensen, you may all remember, he came through with Carbon Roofs International this past year. And he did a really good job on his pitch. Uh, it's very clear. And so we'd like to uh, show that to you as an example of something that exhibits many of these components within a six-minute pitch and slide deck uh, so that we can bring a little more color to it. And for those of you that aren't familiar with Carbon Roots, uh, they're producing green charcoal um, in Haiti uh, to, um, by taking agricultural waste, and so they're providing income to farmers by turning uh, a waste product into a source of income, and then they're carbonizing that and then replacing uh, charcoal that is normally produced from cutting down trees and deforestation and uh, uh, offsetting some of that um, environmental impact. Our value chain is entirely local, so everybody makes money up, up and down the value chain. Uh, we distribute green charcoal in two channels. One of them is local charcoal wholesalers who have their own distribution networks. And the other is through woman retailers that we recruit and train and turn into Chabon Boule retailers. Uh, and you, as you can see, there's quantifiable impact up and down the value chain from our uh, suppliers all the way down to our customers. So um, what Eric articulated here was, value, was his value chain with um, value accruing to every single player there. Um, and uh, full understanding of the unit economics of his business. And uh, Tracy Weatherby, right here, uh, is the one that leads that module for the accelerator. And so uh, she'll be presenting this information again and will be available to all the accelerator, um, social entrepreneurs, and mentors. And um, again, showing that, that tight link between the impact and the business model. Another clip here. So uh, to meet demand, we need to scale up. Um, and to do that, we need to automate the carbonization process to go from that simple kiln technology to uh, a more efficient automated uh, way of doing that. We're piloting this early next year, and by next summer, uh, I hope to come back uh, to GSBI uh, and tell you that we're at full automation at our current factory, uh, which means we'll be producing 18 tons of charcoal per day. Um, and in 2017, we'll start scaling across the country with a second factory, um, and at that point, we'll be uh, providing the energy needs for 125,000 people in Haiti uh, and saving 200,000 trees a year. And so this is an example of how his growth plan was really influenced by the financials and the projections that they had, as well as a lot of the um, kind of operational controls that they had in place. Now, the cost of one of these factories as we scale is $1.2 million. Um, and that re the return on that investment is eight times over 10 years. It's profitable in the fourth month and uh, reach cash break even within two and a half years. Yeah, and so um, that's a very clear um, you know, projection that's linked to his ask and providing a clear investor return. And so that's um, something that John Kohler, who I believe had to leave for another uh, engagement, but he was here earlier. And so uh, that'll be covered in module two, and we'll be revisiting that throughout the whole program. Um, we've got two more clips here. Uh, over the next three years, uh, revenue goes up and to the right which is great. Um, by 2018, we're at three, almost $4 million. 
And our gross margins grow as well. And by 2018, it'll be at 50%, which is our target. And finally, one last clip here. Now, um, to get our current factory to full automation, we're raising $1.3 million over the next 12 months in two tranches. Uh, and then to uh, the next year, in 2017, to scale, we'll, we'll raise an, an additional $1 million. And once we have these two factories up and running, um, we'll actually be producing enough internal cash flow to launch another factory every year in Haiti for the next 10 years. So what that means is that your investment in Carbon Roots International will save six and a half million trees over 10 years. And it will return uh, $47 million in income to the BOP, to, to uh, smallholder farmers and women retailers, uh, and to our customers in the form of savings. Now, this is GSBI, so of course uh, we did the math. And that works out to 30 cents a tree and uh, to a 20x social return on your investment. Great. So um, I think that, you know, that was a really nice example of, you know, an entrepreneur that has a strong case for support where he knows exactly the type of funding that he's looking for, the form of capital, um, what he's going to do with that money and what type of return the investor is going to get. So it, it really engages people and, and it did. Um, in addition to all of the pitch work and business planning work, um, he got a lot of other um, takeaways from the program, which I've listed here, and we'll be sharing these slides in case you'd like to use um, this pitch as an example for any of the entrepreneurs that you're working with. Um, we have it all online on our YouTube channel. And uh, he got a lot of investor interest. He had five meetings set up. Um, following the uh, showcase in August at our December update, we heard that he had a full spread in National Geographic. Um, he was featured in Forbes, and he also uh, received some follow-on funding from USAID as well as uh, one of his current investors. So it worked, and he's um, continuing to be successful. So we're happy about that. Okay, so in terms of getting Eric there, uh, just going through some of the main components for the accelerator, uh, we've got three primary stages. Um, what we're going to be kicking off next week uh, with a webinar on the second for the accelerator group is essentially launching the online pre-work, and this is a series of modules that are hosted by video uh, with accompanying materials um, that are essentially building up the um, mentor's knowledge of the entrepreneurs, the entrepreneur's knowledge of a lot of these fundamental concepts, and preparing so that in August, when we're working together in person, we're making the most out of our time together. Um, and then, of course, we have a boot camp in uh, middle of August, uh, what we call the in-residence, uh, which is a nine-day program that we just pack a million things into, and everybody is um, totally energized and, and tired at the end of that. Um, and then following that, what we call the implementation phase. And so that's really taking the strategic initiatives that were developed, working with the mentor on, you know, whatever those might be until the official end of the program in December. And so uh, the online pre-work as well as the accelerator content is broken up into these general um, components here. And what we have is eight modules that are spaced approximately three weeks apart. And we have content leads assigned to each of the modules. And each module is laid out uh, with clear objectives, uh, deliverables, templates, and examples um, pulled from our social enterprise alumni to make it a little bit more tangible and real for the teams. Um, would the content leads mind raising your hands really briefly just so that we can sort of get oriented? Yeah, so um, Tracy, Anastasia, Jose, Pamela, uh, John Kohler, as I mentioned, um, and then anyone else on the GSBI team uh, are going to certainly be huge resources for for everybody. Um, they are not. They are not. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll have that. We'll have that lined up, and then, uh, yeah, Karen will go through those. Yeah. So the content lead is um, what they do is essentially do some extra volunteering. They they work with Andy Lieberman. Um, Andy, are you still there? You are. Um, so Andy's kind of our, our, uh, our content brain, well he and Steve, and um, they work with him on crafting these modules. And so it's 
um, sort of using our framework and our goals as a, as a, you know, kind of a finish line and then bringing in different content from their own professional background and some research within the space as well. Um, presenting that in a video uh, that we film here, uh, post on group site, and then um, doing some proactive work with the teams to really understand um, how everybody's doing against the deliverables that they've outlined and then being available as a resource. And then oftentimes uh, leading a session during the in-residence <coughs> as well. So they're kind of like our, our experts, our, our professors, if you will. Absolutely, yeah, so for everyone streaming online, the question was how do we improve the content, how do we get feedback? And certainly um, after, after each uh, online cohort, after each accelerator cohort, and each boost cohort, we've got a survey. We're asking the mentors, we're asking the entrepreneurs, um, and oftentimes the content leads on what improvements should we be making, and then we get together and we calibrate all the different points of feedback and try to determine, you know, what what's a consensus and what's uh, maybe an outlier and then we'll integrate all of those. And so um, almost every single cohort has an updated uh, curriculum. And so we will certainly, for this year's accelerator, certainly we are refilming everything um, and integrating a lot of components, trying to really figure out what's the core stuff that everyone needs and then adding to our list of supplemental or additional materials. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and if, so certainly um, to that point, any, any and all comments are always welcome. We are um, always trying to learn and improve and uh, we do it formally through the surveys but are always accepting any sort of feedback um, informally or otherwise. Uh, um, well, it, it could be, um, well, it, it sort of depends on, I think, each country, but as long as they're sort of externally validated, um, we don't audit them ourselves um, or provide that as a service. So this is just a quick rundown of the different modules, uh, the eight modules that we have. And so what we're starting with next week is just kind of kicking it off. And so um, we're asking people to watch the ARC video that we created, um, get to know the mentors, so introduction, set up your weekly calls, and then we introduce a um, template for the business plan, sort of the, the full document that we're gonna be using as our uh, repository for all of this work that we're continuing to build on throughout the course of the program. Um, and then we're also doing a uh, gap analysis, so kind of a stage assessment on where the organization is as we know it, what are some of their goals for uh, what they'd like to get out of the program. Then we jump into capital and fundraising and um, understanding a little bit more ab about uh, the impact investing landscape and what the investors' expectations are of the entrepreneur when they're making their case for support. Um, and then we get into uh, our Mission, Impact Model, and Metrics module uh, led by Tracy Weatherby and Joe Schuchter. Um, and then we get into kind of the marketing component or reaching your beneficiary, which Pamela is leading. Um, then we come back to Tracy and we get into a little bit more detail around the unit economics and value chain. Uh, and then Jose takes the group through operations. And, uh, and then we have uh, what we call the in-residence readiness assessment. And this is um, something that we implemented last year knowing that we make selection errors and oftentimes things come up. Um, uh, there were five organizations last year that were um, not invited to participate in the boot camp uh, and there, there were three reasons that generally happens. One is they're just too early to really benefit for this type of uh, work that we're doing in the accelerator and uh, what, we, I, what we do there is either try to put them into the online cohort or invite them to apply again next year. Um, another reason is that they are just not putting in the, the time that it takes. It's, it's not a big priority for them. Um, and other, there's also just sort of unforeseen business things that happen. In one case, um, co-founders split up and kind of dissolved, and another one, they were running out of cash, and they just needed to focus on fundraising and fundraising only. So uh, we put that, that place in there just so that 
um, when August comes and people really put um, a lot of their resources uh, in terms of time and bandwidth into it, um, that it's, it's working for everybody and that everybody there is, is uh, ready to accept all of that. Yes, John. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so then after that, we're going to get into um, a module focused on the adjustable, justifiable ask. So going into more detail so that we can kind of get their investment profiles ready and get them prepared for the, the types of uh, coaching that they'll be receiving here with respect to pitching to investors. Um, and then finally, we'll get them ready uh, for some of the more tactical things that they'll be experiencing and understanding exactly what types of uh, documentation and pitches that they're going to be need, needing to present. Um, so in terms of an optimal working group flow, and this is certainly true for online as well, um, we found that establishing weekly calls is, is great. Can't always make them, but when you don't have them, it's very easy to just, you know, sort of get this thing pushed back for weeks and weeks. So um, um, that's important. And certainly, is, as was mentioned before, bypassing modules. So if it's not relevant, if it's not necessary, um, and it's clear, you know, give us a heads up, and we're happy to mark that box green and just, you know, let you guys move on. But it gets a little bit more um, complicated with the accelerator. So, um, And then this is some uh, proposed flow that uh, we found works. So this is uh, for the entrepreneurs mostly. So they would review the module on group site, discuss it on their weekly call with, with you, the mentors. They'll post a draft. The mentors will review it. You'll talk about it on your weekly call. Um, you'll give them feedback. Then they'll post a final draft. Then you'll say, looks good. And then they'll move on to the next module. In theory, that's how it would go. Um, this is the tracking dashboard. Um, it only goes this. this uh, is condensed a little bit, and we also took out maybe the, the five that uh, didn't participate. So there's less red um, than, than you might normally see on the weekly updates. But um, this is something that you'll see. This is how we're tracking it internally. And in order for us to mark that box green, we just need to know that you guys have approved it. And all that means is you post it in group site, looks good, move on, or something, or you email us, whatever that is. Um, mentioned the in-residence readiness assessment. Uh, this is kind of the three components that we evaluate against. Um, and let's see. Um, same content for the in-residence, but we're going into much more depth, adding a lot more materials, and we're also adding this presentation skills bucket. Um, so this is a time when the mentors are coming together, the entrepreneurs are flying in from all over the world, our content leads are there, um, we bring in per sort of uh, sector-specific folks. Um, we've, we've got someone who has got a lot of experience in impact investing, and he kind of lives with us. And we've got another guy who's you know, started lots of social enterprises and is a senior leader at Ashoka and just has a lot of familiarity with this space. And so we just try to bring in everybody that we can that we think will be of value to the social entrepreneurs and the mentors, and, um, and it works. I mean, it's, it's an incredible nine days of um, getting a lot done. So it's a great time. Um, and this is kind of a general flow. Uh, I won't go into too much detail here, but um, there's networking opportunities. There's uh, a lot of different parallel sessions. I think we're getting better at figuring out you know, what, what content the entrepreneurs need at that stage and you know, what resources they need. We still have some improvements. We need to um, do a better job at helping everyone meet each other. And, and so a printed Facebook and a directory, all, all things on our list um, to do to help everyone be more successful. Um, but we'll get into detail on all of the same content that was introduced initially in the pre-work, um, plus some. Um, we don't have a, a module in this year's pre-work on HR management, but we'll certainly be going in depth there um, during the in-residence. and. Um, we'll also be doing a lot of presentation preparation for the entrepreneurs so that they feel confident on Thursday, August 18th at the Investor Showcase. Um, so if your entrepreneurs uh, are wondering, they can bring a colleague. Um, it, 
does cost a nominal amount, but we do encourage uh, more than one attendee. We found the entrepreneurs that did that in the past got more out of it. They were able to form some new relationships with their colleagues, and they were also able to split up and kind of divide and conquer on some very, um, some very heavy, heavy work that they had. Taia. Yes. So when are we going to prepare them for exactly what's happening in August? Um, yeah, so I think we're, we're starting to do a little bit of that now with this, this ARC video that we've made and kind of putting the pieces together. And then that's really what Module 8 is about. It comes a little bit towards the end, but that's when we're saying, okay, on this day, you're going to be doing an operations review with Jose. And so th these are the documents that you're going to need to present off of. And on this day, you're doing your two-minute pitch. And on this day, your six-minute pitch. And so... Um, that's really where it comes together, and I think that um, um, maybe we can talk offline, and, and you can help me understand what might help you a little bit before that, and I'd be happy to do that. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, the entrepreneurs only pay for their airfare. Um, other than that, it's, it's all covered um, by the funding that, that we do here at Miller Center. And let's see... Um, Again, the implementation plans that I mentioned before. Okay, so thank you very much for your time. That was a long one. Okay, so just continuing on that thought, I want to introduce Karen Rundy. I think. Um, many of you have heard her name or have been touched by her through email or other sorts of ways. And she, she run in the online program, so let me turn it over to Karen. She'll give you some updates on that schedule. Can everyone hear me? Yeah? Okay. Um, so now I'd like to introduce the 2016 online exceptional list of SEs, as can be seen here. Um, this year, we received a very impressive pool of more than 300 applicants for both our online and accelerator programs. Um, we did something a little differently uh, in that we had one sort of giant application and accepted both, uh, um, both uh, types of programs here. And after a much, much uh, in-depth interview process, the 18 SEs that you see here really represent the, the enterprises that we feel will benefit the most and ultimately succeed after going through the online cohort. Um, as many of you know, the online program is geared towards a specific stage, uh, which is the validate stage of social enterprise. So we feel that the SCs that will go through our online program will be fully able to track and validate their business model after going through online. And then additionally, the SCs that go through online will be better prepared to raise the funding needed to really go on to that next stage of growth. So several of you here are mentoring the online program, and we thank you so much for doing that. Um, and so I'm sure you're already familiar with this list and who your respective SC is. Um, we officially kicked off the online cohort last Tuesday with a webinar, which many of you participated in. Again, thank you so much for doing so. Um, and so... By now, you should have been introduced to your SE. You should have made that connection. Um, as Cassandra said, it's really important to get that, that consistent line of communication going on right from the start of the cohort um, and then really establish a key plan to always communicate as well. Um, so the SCs are you know, hitting the ground running. They're already working on Module 1. Uh, we've already started to receive some drafts of Module 1, which is really awesome. Um, so yeah, so they're, they're good to go. So this is the calendar that we're working with. So it's kind of similar to Accelerator in that there's eight uh, modules. Um, as many of you know, online is a six-month program, and it's all done remotely. So there's no travel to the campus. And there's about a three-week buffer time between each uh, module deliverable. Um, and the online program really culminates <coughs> with this final presentation, which will be in end of July. That's about a week long. Um, so what that is, is the SC will prepare a 12-minute final pre-recorded presentation. 
that they'll then present to a review panel in a scheduled webinar. So the mentors and also the peers in the cohort will also be invited to that. And so the point of that is to really uh, put all that they've uh, gotten out of these modules, these deliverables, and put them into a really substantial 12-minute pitch. And then you really get constructive feedback from this uh, sort of mock review panel. So after that, oh, I don't know what I just did. <laughs> So after the presentation, they will have officially graduated the cohort, so they will receive a DSPI online certificate. Um, they'll, they'll be a part of our alumni network, and they'll also be given a copy of their investor profile. So what that is is a two-page document that the SB can then use as sort of marketing collateral to successfully go approach a, a investor when looking for a funder. And that investor profile will also be put together in one giant booklet of all 18 SBs. And that will be on our Miller Center website. Um, and if you want to see great examples of presentations from our last cohort, uh, I highly encourage you to visit our Miller Center YouTube channel. We've created a little playlist of about five presentations from last cohort still. So I encourage you to check those out um, just so you know what all is expected of your SB. So thank you very much.